serious, Redditors who have lived in a haunted house, what are your most unexplainable paranormal experiences? A lady who had two husbands die on her in the same house. That's the house my dad decides to buy. The first one hung himself from the rafters in the garage and the second one fell ill and died in his bed in the basement. I lived in the basement room and often just felt like I was being watched all the time. The bedroom in the basement has a secret storage room behind a bookshelf with a locking latch. I would always wake up to find the door wide open. It happened so often that I would wake up cold and routinely go shut and lock the latch of the door in the middle of the night. For the longest time I thought it was my dad or stepbrothers messing with me but it wasn't. My stepbrother now occupies that room and he says it still happens to him and that he's even seen it open on its own. There are no air vents or anything so I've ruled out wind. Also in the garage, I always see light coming from under the door through the crack only to open the door to pitch black. I've heard sounds coming from the garage only to find saw blades clanging together and slightly rotating in their place on the whole storage wall. Didn't think anything of it at first, but when you find crap moving on more than one occasion, it makes you look over your shoulder at the rafters and wonder. When I was around 9 to 10 years old, I remember waking up to see a large shadow stood at the foot of my bed. I was living with my dad at the time, he has a very large, five floors, terrace house built in the 1800s, every so often there would be an unexplainable event happen, such as footsteps when there's no one there or voices. On the night this happened, it was just my dad and I in the house, my sister was staying with my mom at the time. I woke up and noticed the door to my room was wide open, I normally sleep with it closed. I then became aware of a large, around 7 feet tall, shadow-like figure watching me from the end of the bed. When the figure noticed me it seemed to melt into the floor and the door to my room slammed shut, understandably I was slightly traumatized by the whole experience. Asked my dad the next day if he was in my room and he denied any knowledge of the event, he's not the type of person that likes jokes. I lived in a house that seemed to be haunted by doppelgangers. Every event that happened never involved some mysterious figure, but a known person being in a place where they should not have been. Here are a few examples. I was a teenager at the time and I was instant messaging my GF at the time with my webcam turned on. I had the viewer up so that I could see myself in the webcam. Behind me, there was the stairs leading up, left of camera view, and the entrance to the living room, right of camera view. My younger sister would typically fall asleep every night on the couch in front of the TV and make her way up to bed in the middle of the night. At one point in my webcam view, I saw my sister leave the living room and go up the stairs. The thing that struck me as odd was that I didn't hear anything. It was an older Victorian house, so the wooden floor and stairs were loud AF. Without saying anything to my GF, I got up and looked into the living room and there was my sister passed out on the couch. I sat back down and asked my GF if she had seen anything in my camera. She said yeah, I just saw your sister go upstairs. My family was all getting ready to go somewhere. I was sitting in the car with my mom and we were waiting on my sister who was still in the house. After a bit she comes out and gets in the car and just looks at me like WTF? I ask her what's wrong and she says that just before she walked out of the house she thought I was still inside so she yelled up the stairs 1LT underscore 0 bs, we're leaving. And apparently I yelled back ok I'll be down in a minute. Edit, some more examples since many people have asked. I did put some of these in a response lower but I'll add them here for visibility. My mom woke up to someone tapping her foot and she said someone was standing at the end of her bed who faded out after a couple seconds. She said it looked like me. I had an encounter where I woke up and felt like someone was under my covers laying up against me. When I said something, my blanket visibly deflated and I no longer felt anything. I include this with doppelgangers because though I didn't see what I felt under the blanket, it laid like my GF would have laid against me. When I was 22 I was in the military and I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It still took like a year after the diagnosis to separate from the military, but I went home on leave for the holidays about a month after the diagnosis. Anyone that has insulin dependent diabetes typically carries around some sort of kit, mine is black zip up pouch and it has a glucometer, insulin pen, needles, and alcohol pads. Right after I left home to head back from leave my mom texts me to ask if I'm missing my diabetic kit. I look, and I'm not. She sends me a picture of a diabetic kit and asks if I know it. I've never seen this kit before in my life. Apparently, my sister went into her bedroom and discovered it outside of her window propped up like someone had set it there. Oh, also, her bedroom is on the second floor. Nobody else we know has diabetes. I live in a house built in the 1800s. 
It's survived the two world wars and it's seen some crap I imagine. One of the previous owners had two sons, who both committed suicide. A lot of strange stuff happens. The animals, dog and parrots, will wake up from their naps and follow something with their heads just as they would follow me if I walk around. Also, before I switched rooms in the house, my brother had a room and he refused to sleep there as he would hear voices. He slept with my parents, he was a child, until the day he got my old room and since then has slept in that room without problems. There's also a whole floor we don't use and I sleep in the attic, and I pass through that floor to get to my attic, weird explanation but it's a weird house, and I have a motion activated light there that goes on as I'm walking the stairs to that unused floor. It would also switch on in the middle of the night while nobody is walking under the motion detector. Also, there's cold spots. I lived in one when I was a teen, along with my parents. Several instances come to mind. We were remodeling an old farmhouse and had been there a couple of months before witnessing anything. One day I was underneath my truck, which was supported by only a jack. Stupid, I know, I was in the middle of working on it, with no good reason to get out at that moment. Suddenly the overwhelming urge to get out from underneath overwhelmed me. No sooner than I got out, the truck fell to the ground, the jack had slipped. Freaked dad out, he thought I was under it. When mom got home, we mentioned it, and she started crying, sobbing pretty hard. It turns out the previous owner died in the driveway, under a vehicle in that spot. I would often see moving shadows, and strangely hear music from the upstairs area. The windows of the old house were caught shut, and blackbirds would often get caught between the panes. We ended up replacing all the windows but we had to break three inside panes to get them out. One of the more disturbing things happened when my mother was cooking breakfast, she turned away to get something out of the cabinet and when she turned back around, all the forks set out were bent straight up. This might get a little buried but I'll share anyway. So two weeks before we moved, my dad and I toured our house and I noticed this guy was painting the water heater which I thought was weird AF but I was like 10 so whatever. Anyway we moved in on a Wednesday and my parents let me stay home from school until the following Monday and preoccupied me with coloring books and a new doll house. In my brand new crayons pack, there literally wasn't a blue crayon, like it was a 64 pack but there were only 63 crayons in it. One day I went downstairs into the basement and my blue crayon was next to the hot water heater and scribbled on there it said hi fit nurse Kevin I was so confused. I started school and my new classmates were like um do you live in Kevin's house? Your house is gonna be haunted. It turned out that Kevin was a little 8 year old boy that lived in our house prior to us and he got hit by a car in the front yard. He would write notes if you left out a pen and paper, open and close doors, adjust the thermostat, the kind where you had to turn a knob and always turn on Christmas music when it was the time of year smile we had a swing set in the backyard and even on the hottest, calmest days of summer, only the left swing would be moving back and forth. We had this dumb cat that I would lock in my bedroom at night and every morning, my parents would open the door and let him out, then close it back. One night I woke up and the cat was meowing at the door and it woke me up, but the door opened and the cat hissed and ran out really fast. I asked my mom the next morning why they didn't close my door and they said they didn't open it? The last story is when I was very upset and nearly suicidal one year during Christmas break, the police just randomly showed up at my house. The policeman said he was patrolling our neighborhood and felt like something was wrong at our house. I'm absolutely certain Kevin had something to do with it. I lived in a house for about 5 years that was haunted, but not in a malicious way. In a crafty roommate kind of way. I'd come home to the windows on the second floor being open when it was raining. To food containers being open in the fridge that I hadn't touched yet. The worst was that the ghost hated clocks. She hated them. I had antique cuckoo clocks that had worked for 50 years that would just stop. Brand new wall clocks that ate through batteries like it was candy. My watch ended up on the floor one morning, the crystal shattered, even though I knew I slept with it on. The one that pissed me off the most was that I got a brand new Kit Kat clock for Christmas, and the bitch threw it off the wall. I was cooking and out of corner of my eye saw the cat freaking fly. Turned around and it was across the kitchen. Broken. It was brand new. Man, she was a bitch. I used to live in an old big five bedroom house with six other people. My so and I shared one of the rooms. I saw a stranger in my room when I was in my 20s. It wasn't exactly visible, but I somewhat knew it was right there in the corner of the room. My so was next to me sleeping. While I had my eyes open, I knew it was there. So I closed my eyes. I tried to wish it away. I opened my eyes and it was now next to the bed, looking at me. I closed my eyes again, and suddenly relief came. I opened my eyes, nothing there. 
I saw it once again at the stairs. It was only a brief moment this time, and then it was gone. There's a post about this somewhere on Reddit that I wrote before but I'm too lazy to dig it up. My husband and I own a martial arts school, and the building that it's in, which we also own, is about 130 years old, next to a church. And I never, and still don't really there has to be another explanation, believed in the paranormal but the things that happened in it didn't just happen to me. It was decrepit, which was why it was so cheap to purchase, and we basically did all the work ourselves, old, creaky, and drafty still knob and tube that we had to get an electrician to change out. So here's a bunch of things that happened. 1. When we'd be working with like drills and electric saws, I'd hear the tinkling of a music box, and I'd stop everyone to ask if they hear it too. No one else did so I assumed it must have been some music from the church coming through. 2. My husband would often hear a woman's voice calling his name from the bottom of the stairs, it's two floors, a basement, and a loft, and, thinking it was me back from work, would always ask it to come up. Turns out the building was empty. Happened four or five times. 3. One night, there's a small apartment on the second floor connected to a large hall. We woke up hearing what sounded like a broom sweeping across the wooden floors in the large hall. My husband got up to go check. But once he would walk in there, the sweeping sound would stop. It happened three more times that night. We chalked it up to mice or squirrels, we did find mummified squirrels in the attic once. 4. We had a barbecue in the backyard and I needed to go get more utensils, there's a metal stairwell from the backyard up to the second floor, and then there's the main entrance staircase opposite to that. I came up the main entrance and heard footsteps pacing back and forth across the far end of hall and thought my husband came up from the metal stairwell to get utensils with me. It was dark and I couldn't see anything. I called out for him and the pacing stopped. No response and then the pacing footsteps continued. Annoyed. I thought he was messing with me so I flipped on the lights and all of the utensils from the shelf where I heard the pacing crashed down to the floor, like I spooked something. But there wasn't anything, not even a rat like I thought there might be. 5. One Saturday morning, my husband was on his computer in another room, I'm in the apartment playing with a Tamagotchi app on my iPad when I heard the stereo sitting in front of me click on and a girl's voice started talking from it. I thought he controlled the stereo from his computer so I ignored it because he often puts on music to work out before class started, he teaches the morning class, I do remember thinking what kind of weird ass indie music is he listening to anyway, because the voice just said hi, my name is, I thought I heard Katie but I'm not 100% sure because I wasn't paying attention I have never known a Katie in my life, I am underscore years old, I'm from underscore etc I didn't catch the specifics because I wasn't really listening but that went on for about 2 or 3 minutes until it suddenly went something's hurting me. And when I caught that, I looked up and squinted at the stereo, like what? Something's killing me. Something killed me. At this point the hair is standing on the back of my neck and I'm getting up from the couch to take a closer look. Please, someone tell my parents, tell the teachers, tell the corrections officer. At the word corrections officer I just bolt into the other room and start yelling at my husband and cursing him out because I was certain he was playing a trick on me. Told him we don't ducking play jokes about dead people. And he's of course looking at me like WTF? When he finally calms me down long enough to get what I heard out of me and what I was accusing him of, he told me it was impossible and led me to the stereo. It's not plugged in. I thought maybe the stereo picked up the signals from an ebook or something. So after that last fiasco. I went to ask our live-in student who lived with his GF in the basement apartment of the building if anything weirds happened. They shot each other an alarmed look and told me this. 1. His GF was sleeping one night when he was working overnight and she heard footsteps come down the stairs and their door open and then close. All of a sudden a bright flashlight shines in her face and she can just make out the silhouette of who she thought was her BF because he's tall, and she can see the dirty jeans he's wearing. She's annoyed thinking he's messing with her so she's swatting at him and telling him to stop. Finally she gets so pissed off she rolls turns on their lamp and there's no one there. 2. They sometimes hear footsteps on the first floor when there's no one in the building. They had a pet mouse at the time and whenever that happened it would start doing backflips in its tank. However, when class is going on and there are people in the building, the mouse didn't care and just wanted about its mousy business. 3. They were play wrestling one day when suddenly, their African grey parrot ruffled its feathers and in a really alarmed voice asked who's there? Who's there? They thought it was funny at first, so our student looked at the bird and pointed to the door and said you mean over here? And ran towards the door to open it. As he did that, all the books that were lining the shelf on the way to the door fell over in front of him and the lights started flickering. 
The bird and the mouse both got spooked and were throwing themselves against their cages. Our second live-in student after the first, the first one got married to his GF, got their own home, had a baby, several times could just not find his phone when he woke up in the morning when he had placed it next to his bed the night before. He would search his room high and low and then he'd find it perfectly placed right outside his locked bedroom door on the floor. I thought he might have been sleepwalking but his GF says she'd realize it if he did since she's a very light sleeper. So don't know what that's about. Nothing notable has happened since then, but we have also not had anyone stay there overnight in years. Edited to add, for all the similar questions. 1. I only looked into it very slightly because again, I am more inclined to believe it's just the stereo picked up an ebook someone was listening to. However, for all you ghost hunters out there, feel free to look it up in the about me page of my food blog, which is in my profile, there's a link to the school which includes the address. Have fun, let me know if you find anything exceptionally creepy. 2. Since it was such an old building and we did most of the work ourselves, as in there was no functional bathrooms or anything and I can now lay tile like a pro, it could have been hallucinogenic mold that affected everyone. 3. I had, some years prior to this, had a week of hallucinating people who weren't there and spiders, which had increasingly insane colors, but they were also tactile hallucinations because I felt them on my hand as well. I otherwise have no issues and those symptoms never occurred again after that bizarre week. So it could be we all had some hallucinations. Moved from the US to the UK and our parents bought an old beat up house. It still had lead pipes for the water. Nightmare all on its own. Anyway work proceeded on the house whilst we lived there. We started seeing bright lights in the corners of rooms at night. Footsteps on floorboards, the house had carpet. I was about 6 at the time and started getting woken up in the night by a little girl, who would dance on my chest of drawers for me. I was frickin' terrified. My mum just fobbed it off as me dreaming. Workmen complained of strange things happening like tools being moved and odd feeling like being watched. After about a year of this my eldest sister's friend stayed overnight. She woke the whole house up screaming, saying a little girl had been in her room, she had apparently pulled her from the bed. The friend left the house and refused to ever come back. Mum decided she might need to do something about it and got some advice. He suggested my mum and the whole family should treat the presences as part of the family. So when we got home we shout hi we're home, did you have a good day? Over time the house settled and we didn't get any more trouble. We also found out a little girl did die in the house of asthma. My parents still live there and it is a beautiful homely place now. My uncle's house out on a very eastern part of NY was said to be haunted due to the family that used to own it in the 1800s decided not to give it to the stableman and sold it instead. He and the maid were said to have haunted the place. We always used to joke that you would hear people or things moving at night but since the house is so old, we used to just laugh it off. My uncle's friend had her and her sister stay over the house one night and the friend noticed a maid bringing towels down the stairs when she woke. She saw the maid again, bringing what looked like a percolator, down the stairs. She was so impressed by my uncle hiring staff, he is a neurologist in NYC so he had a habit of spending a little bit extra. She went back to bed and woke up later downstairs to see my uncle and his friend just chatting. She asked where the maid went and she thought that the maid was cooking breakfast. My uncle had no idea what she was talking about and asked what she looked like. The sister explained and he laughed. Walked her to the living room and pointed to an old picture. She said that was the woman. My uncle replied, yay, she has been dead for about 100 years. Edit percolator. My repost from an old thread. I lived in an old, haunted house in college. Things got so weird that everyone moved out except for me and one roommate. Here's a few. 1. I woke up at 3 a.m. because my roommate's door kept opening and slamming shut. From bed, I yelled for him to stop only to realize I was the only one home that weekend. As soon as I yelled, the slamming stopped, but the hippie beats I had hanging outside my closed door began to sway perfectly, yet violently, against the door frame, for a half hour, while I debated if I should pop out my air-conditioned unit and jump out of the window. I laid in the fetal position in bed till it stopped. 2. I woke up at 3 a.m alone again, hearing the Nintendo in the back porch playing loudly. I figured a drunk kid came in and started playing. I grabbed a bat and walked towards the back of the house as the music got louder and louder. As soon as I opened the door, it was completely quiet, mind you it was loud enough to wake me up. 3. I had friends over and told them the house was haunted. No one believed me so I asked the ghost to do anything to prove it was there. 
As soon as I asked, all the lights in the house began flickering for about a minute straight. This was the middle of the day, everyone witnessed it. 4. Almost everyone who stayed at my house had sleep paralysis at least once in the house. 5. Every time something spooky happened, the house would smell like old lady, flowery, strong perfume. 6. This house had a door built into the flooring that led to the basement. We always had a rug covering it up so no one knew it was there. Things would constantly go missing in the house, and turning up in the basement. This house had a coal chute from when it was heated by coal back in the day. Missing stuff would always be placed on the chute for us to come and get. 7. Roommate had some issues. Once while playing video games late at night he saw mist kind of hovering from the kitchen then move into the bathroom. The bathroom had a trap door that led to the attic, that's where we figured the old lady ghost used to like to hang out. 8. Roommate was up late, he went to go lock the doors and turn off lights. When he turned his back on the room and walked to the door, someone breathed into his ear ha. Huh? He thought it was me, I was sleeping, he turned around, pissed himself, and ran to his room. He was too afraid to come out and turn off lights and TV. 9. Loud thumps in attic at all hours. For peace of mind, we told ourselves squirrels must have gotten in there. 10. Voices would wake us up in the middle of the night. I spent many mornings on the front porch waiting for the sun to come up before I went back in the house. 11. Coincidentally, I had a friend years later that rented from the same landlord, same town, different house, where he and all of his roommates moved out because that house was also haunted. I didn't think it was too weird until he was telling me that when all of the weird stuff happened, it was accompanied by old lady, flowery, stinky perfume. Also, a lot of people had sleep paralysis in that house as well. Edit 1, lots of comments about sleep paralysis, I got them more than anyone in the house. Never had one again in my life after moving out. Edit 2, the basement just kind of trailed off, I actually never explored the whole thing, duck that. The washer and dryer were by the stairs, then there's a gap until you reach the coal stuff, then behind it was just dark. Missing stuff was like TV remote, eyeglasses, Xbox controller, etc. Edit 3, lots of comments about mold in the AC causing hallucinations. I guess that's possible. The only reason I doubt it is because the AC was in my bedroom, while the most vivid ducking sleep paralysis I had was actually during the day after a nap on the couch in the living room. Also I used that AC in other apartments since with no issues. I had a many haunted incidents in the house I grew up in that I can explain, but I'll stick to a couple. One recurring incident involved hearing the voices of my family members who weren't home. Sometimes I would wake up to hear my parents fighting, or my brother and one of my parents, but would find myself home alone when I went to check. It would usually occur on the opposite floor as I was upstairs if I was downstairs and downstairs if I was upstairs, and would stop right when I got onto the same floor. One time was different, though. I was brushing my teeth with the bathroom door shut when I heard one knock and my dad saying my name in a strange and teasing voice. When I opened the door he wasn't there, and when I asked my mom where he was, she said he'd went out to work hours ago, he was a lineman with crazy hours. I went back to the bathroom and almost right after I shut the door again I heard more knocking didn't open the door that time. I didn't have shy ghosts I told my friends when I was a preteen that my house was haunted, and when they stayed over they would always see for themselves. One of my skeptical friends saw a shadow person watching her from the staircase. Another was up late with me and heard banging in the kitchen and when we came out, every cabinet was open. One friend never returned to my house because of an incident we were in the kitchen and heard distinct knocking on the outside of the house, about 10 feet up from the ground out there. When we went to follow the noise, it was returned with knocking inside, then more knocking outside, then knocking inside again in a line towards the room we were sleeping in. When we cracked open the door to peek in, every shade and curtain blew open violently. We didn't sleep in there, and her mom told my mom the next day that her daughter would not be coming back to our haunted house. That was the day my mom admitted that she'd had strange experiences as well. So I used to live in a big house, six bedrooms, four bath, basement, etc by myself. I was there as a hiring perk and to look after the place for my boss who lived out of state but on the home, one of those win-win situations. The first couple of months were fine, but when winter came I started hearing things coming from the second floor. I lived pretty much exclusively on the first floor, it started with little bumps and bangs coming from above where I had my computer set up and progressed to distinct footsteps coming and going across the second floor. 
I had been up to the second floor to check up on it from time to time and I knew that there were unfinished areas up there. One place always stuck out an unfinished room that was a sort of walk-in closet for one of the upstairs bedrooms. It was attached to the garage attic, complete unlit. It was open when I went up to investigate the noises. I shut the door and locked it. Two nights later, more noises. Footsteps leading from unfinished room to the bathroom then nothing. The worst part the door. The door that led to the unfinished room would not stay closed or locked. I tried everything. Eventually I pushed the bed up against the door to keep it from opening. That seemed to work, a few months went by without the door coming open, but I would find it unlocked all the time. As time passed I would hear noises all over the house. Mostly footsteps, but the occasional thump with no explanation. I cannot explain how horrifying it is to hear little taps up and down the hall from the other side of a bathroom door during your morning shower. I eventually moved out but another employee moved in to take my place. His stay there only lasted about a month. The story he told me is that he was shaving one morning before work and he heard a slam like someone dropped a heavy stack of books right outside his bedroom door, then heavy footsteps like someone running down the hall. He won't stay there anymore and no one in the company will live in the house. In 2012, my stepfather overdosed on heroin and dropped dead in the hallway in his condo apartment. My mom had to move out shortly after since they were already behind on mortgage bills. A few months later, my lease went up and I was barely making ends meet and couldn't find a new roommate. My mom offered me the key to the condo apartment to squat for a few months until I saved up enough for my own apartment. I took the offer and moved into the condo apartment. After a month or so, I was asleep in the living room and I had this dream of him standing in the hallway facing the living room. He was looking at me and smiling slash laughing. Even made a stupid joke and everything. It wasn't disturbing at all, just bittersweet. Then I suddenly woke when I felt some pressure stroking down my head and back. There was nothing around me and it tripped me the hell out. As a skeptical person that doesn't believe in the paranormal, it has to be some kind of sensory hallucination. It was still nice to see him in my dream once again though. Made me tear up typing this. R.I.P. Darren. Mildly interesting fact, he dropped dead on July 13th in 2012. On a Friday the 13th. Super late to this but I had the best haunter ever and miss my first home because of this. I grew up with a cat, Boots, who was just a year my junior. Boots was motivated only by food and spent his later years sleeping on my parents' bed until someone came home, then he'd jump off the bed, with a thunk thunk of his front and back paws hitting the ground, and run to his food bowl to beg. He had to be put down when I was 18. My parents moved out of my childhood home during my first year of college. I went back a few times before it sold. Every time. I was certain I felt a cat's presence. Like, I'd hesitate my step because I was sure a cat just walked under my legs kinda thing. Also, upon walking in, I'd always hear a thunk thunk, like boots jumping down to beg for food. My mom and I went back for the last day my family would ever be in that home, and I told her on the way what I'd experienced. To my surprise, she had the exact same feeling. When we walked into the house, thunk thunk. We exchanged shocked glances, and confirmed we both heard it. I went and sat in my empty room while my mom got the final things together, and while my eyes were closed I had to force myself to not pet a cat that I felt walk up to me, because I knew logically he wasn't there. Before leaving, we stood in the hallway outside my parents' bedroom, hugged each other, and cried, saying bye to my first home. I said I thought Boots was still around, and suggested we take his spirit to the new house. She agreed, so she called out, Bootsy. From my parents' room, thunk thunk. We both heard it. I don't think he came with us. He never liked car rides. But I hope the owners since us have enjoyed their ghost kitty. He was a good boy. Edit, here's a picture of Boots from 2006, two years before we left that house the last time. 